as part of the exercise, uh, we had ran a program where the idea was to teach the students about looking at security more holistically, not just thinking about the technical aspects of it, but also thinking about the actual people aspect of it. So worrying about or considering the people that sit next to him may not necessarily be on the same team. So what we had done is schedule out a plan where I would go in and interview all the students I could get a hold of. And basically I would ask them very generic questions about what school are they from? What team are they on? Then through the mix I would start to asking questions that would provide us, Red Cell, more important information. Uh, in this case I would ask questions along the lines of, so who's your team lead? Uh, what boxes are giving you the most trouble? Is Red Cell compromised any of your boxes? Have you recognized that they've been compromised? And what have you done to try to mitigate or get rid of Red Cell from your machines? All information that us on the Red Cell can turn around and use to kind of change our pattern of attack. We can kind of manipulate the way we're going after them or even change our IPs if we think they're starting to get close to submitting what's considered an incident report, in which case they could come and arrest somebody from the Red Cell. What has been the best challenge or the hardest challenge for you? Has it been the Windows boxes? Has it been Linux? Has it been the networking side, like the firewall? Uh, actually, I think by far the, the most difficult thing that they've thrown at us this year is the injects. The injects have been really difficult, and I know at least our team, we've been having trouble with them. I mean, it's a lot of stuff. You, you can't really predict it. You only have one research machine. You have a very limited time to implement some of these things, and they're not, they're not simple things. So you know, we've been getting a little hammered on the injects, but you know. <laughs> How about from the Red Cell? Do you feel they've been beating on you? Have you caught them in any machines? Um, we've, we've definitely felt uh, a Red Cell influence on our Linux machines. We've been suffering a little bit there. We haven't found anything explicitly on our Windows machines. It's not to say that they haven't been there. We just haven't found them there. <laughs> Are you the team lead for your... No, no, actually, uh, Madeline is the team lead. She's the uh, red-headed girl on our team, which is kind of cool because I think there's only uh, ourselves and one other team that has a girl on the team. So. And how would you rate her performance for all this? Uh, she's very organized. Yeah, she's very organized, so she definitely keeps us in line. Um, yeah, if it wasn't for her, who knows? We might have been late here. Y you name it. Uh, you got to have a very organized team captain. Now is Madeline, um, obviously she must go to the same school, is she, where is she in um, the scale? Is she a graduate student? Is she a senior? Is she new to these events? She's also new to these events. I think she's a junior right now, um, so she's going to be a senior next year. So she's going to, you know, uh, probably be hopefully running the whole show next year when the new groups come in. Very cool. Um, you had mentioned that you've seen some activity within the boxes. Um, what has been your strategy for kind of taking care of it or getting them out? Um, well, initially, at first, we would just try to kill the process, just dump them out. But right now, we're trying to actually collect some data to fill out some incident reports, because some incident reports are actually needed to you know, get points and win in the, com in the uh, competition. Would you say you have found kind of a, a pattern or kind of a profile for the way they're attacking your, your team? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, there's kind of a pattern. I mean, they already had the bash compromise when we got there, so it was it was it was kind of like you know, like we we tried disabling the services, and then we realized about 30, 40 minutes into it that bash was compromised. So we had to uh, switch bash, and then we found out that it wasn't bash, and <laughs> you know, it was just it was just one thing after another. So it's it's kind of unpredictable, and it's it's hard to narrow down and isolate what the actual problem is because there's so many possibilities. So, do you feel that you guys have been able to identify um, a certain uh, red cell part or person, or you must have some uh, IP we, addresses, I assume? Yeah, yeah, we have some IP addresses, and we've actually been talking to them back and forth on the computer because they're they were on our server. That's awesome. <laughs> so you're actually. At interacting with Red Cell. Yeah, yeah, we touched a file, like, leave us alone, and they said no. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> We've been talking back and forth with them. That's awesome. And, uh, I mean, it's it was really hard. It's, it's still really hard to keep them out. But once you once you finally narrow it down, um, I mean, they're really good. They're, they're obviously professionals. They're really good at hiding themselves. Like, you can go who, you can monitor the processes, and they're just not there, you know. But somehow they managed to, they managed to do it. 
Anything else you would like to say about the CCDC event? Have you found it to be, you know, I know it's a ton of stress, but have you found it to be educational? Uh, definitely. Like, if I didn't join this team, I wouldn't know, like, anything about Linux systems at all. So I'm just happy that I got the chance to learn and come here and experience it firsthand. Do you feel you're getting a lot out of the security education about being in this kind of live fire exercise? Definitely. This is, like, pretty much opened my eyes to, like, cybersecurity, and it's just, it's awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Day two. I mean, what do you think? What's been what's been the challenge for you? Uh, I don't know. It's just uh, it's been interesting. We uh, at, at Towson we have this case studies class that's kind of like this. Uh, we set it up. We run attacks on each other's networks. And I thought I was prepared coming in. A lot of us did. And it's just like red team is intense. They know what they're doing. Uh, they're on their stuff, and they they keep you going. Um, I mean, you're you're exhausted at the end of the day, but at the same time, you don't want to leave your computer because you're terrified that Red Team's going to break something. So, so tell me a little bit about that. What has uh, Red Team been able to get into, or what have you like been able to find? Well, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, one of the big things is, I mean, they've uh, they've been hitting us a lot with uh, IPv6, and uh, that's that's been a big deal for us. Um, we're we're working on securing that. Um, we. Uh, uh, a lot of the problems been they had a power failure, a simulated power failure last y yesterday, halfway through the day, which basically meant for us that we rebooted all the machines from scratch, uh, started at default for the day. And at the same time, we had a forced lunch break. So we were forced away from the computers for an hour, and they just wreaked ha It was havoc everywhere in our system because the firewall's down to nothing, and all the machines have default passwords. So. Uh, that was one of the big things they did. Locked us out of a couple machines there, and uh, we're still still recovering from that. Um, just so we come clean, I'm Red Cell. So everybody who I got a chance to speak to, you were basically kind of duped in a way. And it was played up, and you guys kind of had a disadvantage because the way we set it up, it looked legit. Uh, in fact, some of you even said to me, hey, well, you know, you, you're not Red Cell, I can tell. You don't look like Red Cell. You're not dressed all in black. You're not, uh, you know, scruffy looking or you're not looking at all our machines. And that's really the point I was trying to get across was take a look at not just the technology pieces of it, but think about, hey, you know, the guys on my team, maybe ne not necessarily on my team. Maybe, you know, somebody's working another part or asking me for information. You got to start to really think about that. So I asked a bunch of questions to everybody, but I always had the same basic ones in the beginning where it was just, who are you? Who do you, uh, what school are you with? What year are you in? And then I would start to mix in other questions that would provide us, Red Cell, information. Now, just so we're straight, nothing that was collected was used to try to attack your boxes or could impact your scores in any way, shape, or form. But it really gave us intel about what to work on. So some of you I asked, you know, oh, what boxes have you been able to defend and which ones haven't you? And you guys would more than openly tell me, oh, yeah, th these boxes, we've done well. The Debian boxes, oh, we think they're owned, but we think we got them out. Oh, we're submitting an incident report for a specific IP address. All that type of intel, I'm running back to Red Cell and saying, hey, guys, we need to change our IP addresses. They're, they're on to us. Um, it's really just to give you guys a sense that you have to think about who's around you. Don't just think about securing the perimeter, but really think about all the pieces of security. As you guys graduate and go into the job market, you're going to find that organizations tend to have a kind of an enemy at the gate approach, meaning that we all put tons of money into protecting our perimeter, right? Firewalls, IDS, access control, all these things. And most organizations have stuff on the inside also to make sure that people are vetted. But even if somebody's vetted, doesn't necessarily mean they're playing on your side. So what I wanted to kind of give you guys when you take away from all this is really think about it. Security is not just the technology pieces and the bits and the bytes. It's all the other little aspects. It's making sure that you know your players, making sure that if think about what you're talking when you're talking to somebody, how they could use that information. Because my whole strategy was to aggregate little pieces of information from each one of you and then pull it all together and to have some juicy bits out of that that I could take and do something with.